Okay, guys. Um, I'm Lauren Chamberlain. I teamed up with Last Motion to do this Facebook Live question and answer. Um, I haven't done one of these before, so I'm excited. I've done a couple on Twitter and stuff, but uh, we've gotten so many questions and so many good questions at that, and um, I'm excited to answer them all and um, get you guys some good insight and feedback on what I'm up to now and what I've been doing and um, recovery and all that good stuff. Again, these questions are awesome, so I'm really excited. But I am with Blast Motion. They're on here. They're going to be commenting the questions to me, uh, and I will be able to answer them. All right, so first question from Blast Off Ball. First and foremost, how's your recovery going? And this is actually from, let me go back. Compton Harley on Twitter, at Compton Harley. Recovery is good. Um, I'm two weeks, am I two weeks out, right, on Thursday? Yeah, two weeks out, uh, which is crazy. Um, I think, I feel better, like I feel good. I'm actually like, look, my arm's moving, I'm good. Um, it's okay though, it's been pretty frustrating, honestly, to not be able to use my right arm and my right hand and, and Kind of participate in the things that I normally participate in. Um, biggest thing is just like around the house stuff that I didn't really know that I used that so much. And so what I had done was um, labrum repair, and then they went in and like kind of repaired part of my bicep. So it's pretty much the top of my shoulder and then my bicep, which the bicep is honestly the part that fires the most. Even like the littlest movements in your hand can uh, trigger your bicep to kind of go off. So it's just been adjusting and and life in a sling is no fun and I don't really enjoy that because I'm just so go 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 and I use my hands a lot when I talk and stuff so it's um it's been challenging but it's good I uh, started PT uh, just kind of working around the muscles and loosening them up and stretching and doing a bunch of PT on other things too so um, it's it's going well yeah thank you for your question let us see Oh, people are on. This is so cool. Hi, firecrackers. I love it. All right, Blast. You got another one for me? Okay, here we go. At Russ Solace 79 on Twitter asked, what's my favorite snack when I'm on the road? <laughs> this is good. Um, I love Sour Patch Watermelon. And that is like, what are you looking oh. at my room? What, you don't like them? No, <laughs> just the watermelon ones, not the Sour Patch Kids, like all the colors, just the watermelon ones. No, I smack those. <laughs> the Sour Patch Kids watermelon only, like just the watermelon one. I think that's my favorite one. And I, um, I don't believe in, you know, single serving. It's mostly just <laughs> knock them down while I have them, you know, no leftovers. Thank you for your question. Okay, next. Um, at Hey Punko on Twitter asked, the Pride versus the Dogs was the best two teams playing for the championship. Best hitters against the best pitcher. What happened in your opinion? Interesting question. That's a good question, though. Um, that was a hard one. Uh, obviously, you could tell that we were visibly upset because we were very upset at the turnout um, of the championship series. We worked hard to get there, and anybody that doesn't come out on the winning end of that uh, – obviously has a feeling about it. Um, what happened in that instance is in a championship series, it's who gets it done consistently over and over again to, to get the trophy. And that's what Monica Abbott did on the scrapyard dogs. And she had the offense um, behind her in those three games that, that outscored us. And we couldn't really consistently put things on the board. I mean, we kind of got hits here and there and, and home runs here and there, but uh Again, it was just kind of a tough situation. We just, they scored more runs and um, she she shut us down when she needed to shut us down. So um, props to her and props to the dogs for a good championship series. Um, and we're excited to hopefully get back to that, that um, championship series next year. Next, we have at Tanasia from Instagram. What's your favorite thing to do when not playing softball? Hmm. Favorite thing to do would probably be honestly playing with my dog and my roommate could vouch for this because my dog is my baby and I would just find random things to do before I got this dog and then all of a sudden I got this dog 
and it was really against everybody and it was they were like don't get the dog don't get the dog like you don't have time like you're always at softball you're always doing this you're always doing that traveling whatever but he uh forced me to slow my life down and he's my little buddy and he's my best friend and he's my son so um i like to hang out with my dog and uh kind of just wander in um, pet smart that's kind of what i like to do Okay, we have at Mike Tango 909 on Instagram. What players did you look up to in college? Anyone from other teams? Always loved the series between you and Tennessee. Um, I would say I have three, three players that I looked up to. One of them has to be on the Oklahoma team, Amber Flores. It was um, a Palm Springs tournament and I was there watching when I was in high school and I didn't know anything about Oklahoma. I didn't know anything about the Sooners. I didn't know anything um, about OU softball at all. And I remember seeing Amber Flores playing second base and she jumped up and snagged the ball and um, it was an athletic play and it's been made before. I mean, it was a great play, but it wasn't the play. It was the way that she reacted after and she spiked the balls hard she could into the ground <laughs> before she came into the dugout. And I just loved that. I loved her passion and I loved her excitement. And um, because of Amber Flores, I remembered who they had Sooners across um, their jersey that day. It didn't even say Oklahoma. So I was like, who are the Sooners? Like, I need to, you know, like look them up and see if that's a program that I'd want to go to. And again, I was really young um, early in high school. So it was um, just a moment that I I remember to this day. Um, second player would have to be Daniel Laurie. And I've told her this multiple times. She uh, pitched at Washington. She played on the Pride for a bit. Uh, but when she was at Washington, uh, she was just a workhorse. And she literally, like, brought the team with her and, and commanded respect and um, – or demanded respect, excuse me, and just – basically dominated. I loved watching her pitch and I wasn't a pitcher. It was just the way she pitched and the way she carried herself and her tenacity that, um, that made me, you know, fall in love with her as a player. She's just awesome. And I still look up to her in many ways. I mean, she's killing it, um, doing the whole mom thing and, and super fit mom, which was like awesome. I'm like, she's still competitive and I love it. And, and she has purpose in her life. And I just really enjoy, um, being friends with her. And then Jen Salling, same thing at um, University of Washington. She was just a force in the box, and I loved the way she stepped in the box, and she had a routine, and she um, just consistently performed for them. And uh, she was just a badass, so I really liked watching her play. Okay, let me see. All right, from Facebook, Marco Mendez asked, what do you believe is more important in a swing, and how can coaches start girls on the right path? Oh, a right path to a great swing such as yours. Um, I would say when they, I would say how like fluid um, a girl's movements are. So if you're talking about starting a girl young, um, definitely would have to be how fluid you could get her in her arms. Um, softball players, a lot of the time when they're growing up, they think really like short, compact, kind of like, swing and hit your shoulder immediately like that kind of swing like if you know what I'm talking about um kind of in and out of the zone really quick and I would I would say that it's important to be able to understand your body movements enough um to like fluidly move through a swing and and allow it to be long and elongate your arm through the zone because sometimes it's just hit the ball and then pull off really quick and it's it doesn't really look athletic and I don't think it performs athletically let me see Side note, Carrie, your daughter just had labrum surgery in August. Um, I'm excited that she can kind of start moving and getting into things, but that makes me excited that she, uh, not excited that she went through it, but excited that I have a buddy to go through rehab with. Okay, let's see. A lot of people asked about my pregame ritual uh, before nap bat. Pre-game, I don't really have a pre-game ritual. Uh, I, I know I'm dancing at some point before the game. I provide the locker room entertainment uh, in various ways, so it's funny. Um, I don't really have anything specific, but in the championship series, I drink a Coke before every game. I know that's not what you want to hear, and that's not what you want to tell your daughters to do. I don't think they should, but... <laughs> I um, drank a Coke during the games because it was just long games and it was LSU heat. And again, like the sugar's not going to do anything for me, but it was like the like the caffeine kick before the game that got me ready to go. Um, 
before my at bats. Um, I just try to visualize everything when I'm in the on deck circle, just kind of chill for a moment, take deep breaths, um, get some timing down. When I walk up to the plate, I like to dig one foot in the box, put my other foot in, tap the plate, point, and bring it back. Um, I don't really think that changes much, but if I do have a, a thing that I do all the time, a ritual, that's probably what it is. Let me see, sorry, I'm like on my phone, so I have to use this. Um, okay, blast, whatever's next. Advice for an athlete, athletic high school freshman who has been out of, due to injury since July. Okay, anytime you're out for an injury, I was out for an injury um, uh, two times really in college when I hurt my back and then when I tore my PCL. And honestly, the time that I wasn't able to um, play when I hurt my back, I got myself mentally prepared. Like I visualized myself in game mode, even though I couldn't physically be there, I was there mentally. Even if I was in the locker room during practice or I was at home, like, you know, icing my back or resting my back, whatever it was, I was ready to go by the time I got back. And because it, when you turn off physically, you're also turning off mentally. So I think you can have an edge, at least what I could do is use my mind and visualize um, you know, really successful games that I had and, and um, moments that I came up big for my team. I always just um, stuck to those and held on to those memories and those um, visions in my mind. And I practiced them over and over and over and over again um, so that when I did, the opportunity did present itself um, in the future when I was back healthy and I was playing and physically able to execute it that I could. Um, let's see. Have you ever had a walk-off home run? I did. I um, my favorite one. I don't. Think, I don't know how many I've I've hit. I don't think. I don't know. That's a good question. But my my favorite one was um, against Tennessee, game one of the Women's College World Series in 2013, when we ended we ended up winning uh, that that next day. So um, that was my favorite one to date. I think I blacked out, and I, I mean, I say that like I, I blacked out when I ran the bases. I really don't remember, but when I watch it back, I can, I can kind of recollect. Okay, we've got another one from Blast um, Instagram at Hey It Ha It's Brooke. Hey It's Brooke. <laughs> one of those. What was your favorite moment playing with the Sooners? Favorite moment would be obviously winning a national championship. Nothing compares to that. Um, I, uh, that's my first one. I'm, I know you're saying favorite moment, but, um, my second favorite moment, uh, the, you know, your like your best moments always, they're like the women's college world series. Right. And that's, I mean, that's where dreams come true. That's the best place on this, on this freaking earth. But when you, um, are battling it out, uh, in Alabama at their place and we lost and it was devastating and they ended my collegiate career, but playing, um, at Alabama Stadium was one of the highlights of my uh, college career just because of the way that the fans were and the environment and it was do or die and it was to the next one and you had to do whatever you could to try to get your team back to the World Series and it was Super Regionals of 2015 and um, just that that atmosphere I will never forget playing in front of uh, people like that and and the fans were so respectful but they were like there to to obviously have Alabama win. So when you have 4,000 plus fans on top of you, like, and, and totally surrounding you with their back part of their field that you can um, sit on, it, it was pretty intimidating, but it's kind of, it's, it's why you played softball. That's why I played softball. That's why I wanted to go to Oklahoma. And that's why um, I wanted to, you know, do the whole postseason thing. I mean, that's what, that's what I've been dreaming about. So that environment was amazing. Longest game I've ever played in. I don't know, but the one that, going back to that walk-off in 2013, we went to, I want to say it was 11 innings, or we closed it out in 12, 12 innings? No, no, no. 11 or 12. I don't know. But I think that was the longest one I'd been in. I know, I, I don't know. Maybe I've been in like 12 or 13 inning, but this last one that OU went through, that it was like 17 innings or something. Yeah, there's no way. I'm glad it was them, not me. Let's see. Instagram re44 underscore panthers05 asked, um, as a hitter, when you feel your timing is off, how do you fix it? 
uh, first thing I'm gonna do is take a deep breath because usually when my hit my timings off I'm I'm always early I don't I tend to be on the early side that's just me personally I don't really feel like I'm too late it's mostly on the early side so I would take a deep breath and relax and get my you know kind of um, body regulated again and my breathing regulated so I can at least start to slow down that's my first step and then my second step would be to physically place a ball and line it up on the back um, with my back foot so say you're lined up on the plate and um, this could be done in a cage or, or in front toss sometimes I would do it I'd put a ball uh, opposite of me um, in the other batter bo batter's box lined up with my back foot so mentally or mentally I or physically I would see the ball but mentally I, I had to uh, force myself to wait physically too for the ball to get back and pass that ball before I would swing so for me I'm thinking that's way behind like that's behind me like I'm I, it's gonna be too late it's gonna be too late and then all of a sudden it was right on time so it's just kind of like a mental thing that I that I would use just place a ball at the contact point uh, and make it dramatic because if you make it dramatic then your adjustments gonna be quicker so if I placed it normally uh, and tried if I didn't do anything really and tried to be later it probably wouldn't get done as quickly as if I had something physical there to, to force me to, to wait let's see these are all good questions I'll get to some at the end I want to definitely get the the um, blast motion questions that were submitted before let's knock those out and then I want to totally get to you guys your other questions um, I'll do one while we wait um, Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to pick a good one. Oops. Again, I'm on my phone, so bear with me. I'm trying to... Uh, all right, Christopher Garcia, when you are on a win streak, do you wash your uniform? I washed my uniform and our 12-game win streak was broken. <laughs> I for sure wash my uniform. Like, I don't. <laughs> I'm going to say yes, I wash my uniform every time. <laughs> There's no way. I can see maybe dirty socks, but don't quote me on that. I don't know. I don't think I would want to have anything dirty on me while I play. But again, I'm not superstitious. I'm not like very superstitious. There's certain things, but... Washing my uniform comes before my superstitions on the field. <laughs> Thank you for that, though. All right, let's see. I am 15 and play very competitively. This is from Blast. I'm 15 and play very competitively and have yet to hit a home run. Does that really matter if I want to go D1 or D2? Um, I would say that's it's pretty vague um, saying I haven't hit a home run. Um, I would say definitely check out your strengths as a hitter. What are you, what have you done, right? So if you haven't hit a home run, you're probably going to be more of a gap to gap hitter and, and put the ball in play and more of a contact hitter, which is totally cool. And there's definitely colleges D1, D2, D3, any, any level that are looking for contact hitters. Um, that can just put the ball in play and move move runners around so I wouldn't necessarily focus on I haven't hit a home run um, If you think that that's your best part of your game that you you should be hitting home runs I would definitely work harder at that if you're striving for D1 um, or D2 but uh, really just kind of have that conversation with yourself and, and Think about what you are good at and what you could bring to the table and address it in that that manner Not so much that I haven't hit a home run yet um, all right, from Instagram, at Emily B. Life 9. Uh, what are your biggest goals this year on the field and off the field? Um, we just ended, so I have a whole off season to really address the last season and, and think about what I want to accomplish on the field for next season. Um, I think I can at least tell you that I'm trying to get better every year um, and that's been happening so I'm excited about that and uh, I set goals for specific goals for myself again once I get um, kind of get going into my training and, and stuff like that right now my goal 100% um, is to get healthy that's my first and foremost goal um, when I am healthy and I feel like everything is good to go mentally physically emotionally spiritually all of that 
um, and I'm able to physically start training. Um, I definitely have a lot of goals in, in mind. I, I want to get stronger. Um, I want to get faster. I want to lean out a little bit. Um, I have different things when I'm in the box um, and I'm, or let's say I'm in the cages and I'm training uh, uh, specifically with blast. I want to improve my numbers with blast. That's always something cool because I'm just checking it out and I'm looking at it and I can see what I can get better at. So uh, it's not stuff I have to make up. It's literally just telling me, okay, let's improve this. Let's improve that. So um, I have, you know, data that I used and I got during the season this past season. So uh, what better stuff to improve on than, than that data? So those are my goals right now. Um, again, those are always uh, fluctuating, but my main, my main goals are um, to get better. So I'll do anything I can to do that. Okay, so in, I'll, I'll answer one um, from here uh, since I'm on it. Uh, Paisley from Oklahoma Angels 07. Growing up, did you practice every day? How did you stay motivated? Uh, growing up, I, yeah, I definitely practiced a lot. And that was in the development stages for sure. So um, uh, leading up, I mean, I quit when I was 12 because I, was, I felt like I was practicing too much. And I've told that story before, and I'll keep it brief, but I think if you find a good way to keep it fun, but you're also still getting your work done, um, I would suggest stay practicing as, as long as you love it. Um, if you feel like you're getting burnt and you feel like it's not, it's kind of backfiring and it's not really working, I would chill. Um, don't do it every day. Obviously, you want to continue your reps in, and get your reps in during the week, but uh, I mean, I don't think I went more when before high school. I don't think I, I went more than f four times a week, four or five times a week. And everybody's different, so it's really what what works for you. That's that's how I can answer that question. I am so excited about who's on this right now. I see everyone. Hi, Danny. I see everyone. This is cool. Let's get another one. Um. Do I ever see myself? Oh, we already answered one. Hold on, hold on. Uh, all right, Ashley Perez asked, what are your future plans as far as your own career with Pride? Do you see yourself coaching later on? My future plans, I can say I have future plans and then they just go down the tank. I think that's with everybody. So um, my future plans are to play as long as I can. That's as long as my body's willing and that's why I, you know, fixed up the wing to uh, get healthy again and, and be my best and hopefully I, I hold up and I can play for as long as I can and a uh, future plan is obviously the Olympics. I'd love to be on that team um, and, and wear USA across my chest. I think that's awesome. So um, again, just just keep, keep trucking along and playing as long as I can. Um, do I see myself coaching later on? Um, it would definitely have to be later on after I stopped playing. I don't know if I could coach. I coach individual girls and, and do the, the whole hitting thing and the, the lessons and stuff like that. And I love that. And I run the clinics and that coaching is good for me because I can, um, it's, it's that quick feedback. And also it's, I, I can schedule it for myself. If I'm being honest, like during the day, I, I control the hours and I can control, you know, I can mentally prepare for what I need to put into say an hour long lesson. Um, with coaching, obviously that's a lot more responsibility and I don't feel like I'm ready for that right now just because I would, I would want that player to get the best version of me um, as a coach. And I think if I have other things that I have to train and I have to do this and that, I wouldn't be able to give my whole heart um, to a, an actual team that I would have to, to coach. But I would say in the future, that's not off the table at all because I, I do love um, making people better and again the the bringing a team together and and seeing what a team is capable of and knowing that you had a part in that from the coaching side could be cool so i think i could do that let's see if we have anything else coach with patty <laughs> i would love to coach with patty gasso i think that would be great she's the best Let's see. Blast, anything else? I think we have some more coming. I'll get one more before we see another one. 
How important is it to play with a known select team? Firecrackers, Glory, etc. You know, I love my um, where I come from, my alumni firecrackers. I love I love that organization, Tony Rico, and what he's he's done with that. And um, I had such a good time on that team, and we dominated, we dominated. But we also faced off with a lot of teams in nationals, um, in different, you know, PGF, and, and we faced off with teams, honestly, later in the tournament that didn't really have a big name like Firecrackers or Glory. So I don't think it plays too much into it. I think if, um, you know, you're, your team is is trying their best to get into the right places and and get around you know the college coaches that need, they're going to get you that exposure or like if they're if they're invested in your future and stuff like that I would say you can find a lot of those teams that don't have those big names obviously your college coaches are going to be a little bit more familiar and um, I would say be quicker to trust a, a coach a travel ball coach that's you know knowing or um, is known for putting their players into big time uh, universities but. Um, again, it's just up to you and what you feel and, and how much that coach and that team is, is giving to you and, and investing in you. Um, let's see. My favorite bat to use, brand, weight, length, from at Compton Harley. Um, my favorite bat is the Rawlings Quattro. I've been with Rawlings for a long time and... It was worth before it switched to Rawlings, so that was um, important for me to stay with something that I'd, I'd been with for a while. Um, but the Quattro, it's a 34-24. I actually went up 34-25 this past season, so the Quattro line is is fantastic. But they also have some really good bats um, that are different. So check out check out Rawlings. Let's see. All right, Blast, you have one more question. Um, you're saying we have one more question. Can you please bring Quavo out to California to see us the next time you come? Of course, I will try. Caroline, do you know anything about flying dogs? We're gonna, we can get him certified as an emotional support dog. I think he should be an emotional support dog. He is very emotionally supportive. He's there for me. All the time. All the time. Even when you're mad. I'm mad and my dog stays with me. Even when he's mad, Even he's, he's sitting mad. on me. <laughs> Even though he's pissed, he's sitting on me. He's the best. Oh, I love this. Dude, if he could, I don't think, can, would a pit bull ever be allowed to get on a plane? I feel like people would flip. Whatever. They're racist. They're dog racist. Dog. <laughs> They're discriminating against the puppers. Um, okay. Blast asks, what brings the, you the most joy in your life, whether it be your career or outside of softball? What brings me the most joy? Honestly, I think what brings me the most joy is um, helping out other people. I know that sounds cliche, but um, I think anytime I'm giving a lesson and I see somebody get better and I had a part in that and, and they, I see their excitement and um, how much that they're starting to believe in themselves, I... I get joy out of that. That gives me joy and that brings me joy. Um, whether I'm at the Boys and Girls Club, talking with the kids and, and just playing a game of pickup basketball, um, it's the relationship that I built with that kid and that he knows he can trust me and um, or, or she can you know, hang out with me and feel loved. I love loving on other people. I think that that's something that brings me joy. And that's something that you can't, you can't buy that. You can't... Um, I don't know. It's just that that's what brings me joy. And I love that. And it's, it's like, that's a very emotional topic for me just because I've, um, I mean, I don't think I've, I've always cared, but I think when I really started to get in with the boys and girls club, that kind of opened my eyes to the impact that I could have. Let's see what else. Kevin said, thanks for being a great role model. Kevin, you're the best. Tell her I said hello. Glad I could do that for her. All right, Blast, I want two more questions. Hit me with two more questions. Because I think I think there's there are gonna be some good ones. I have Dan Tuttle asking the favorite pride uniform. All white with pinstripes, okay. I'm not a fan of all white. <laughs> I don't think there are many fans of all white, but we did wear it a lot, and that's that's our um 
our combo when we need a, I need a little pick me up um, when we're playing. So I love red, white, blue. I love the red jersey. I think it looks so nice. And I got my little, I, I like the color red. I got a red blast tee on right now. Um, but the, the red, white, blue combo is just solid and we look good and everybody looks nice and crisp and sharp. And then we usually, we win. So it's good. See how I like get talking with my arm and like, that's my bad arm. I got to chill. Like I'm like literally like getting into it, Caroline, where I'm like going like, down. I need to simmer down. Simmer down. <laughs> Name that movie. What is that movie? <laughs> you know it. Simmer down now. This is my roommate Caroline. She's over there. I'm just. I know, I know they say that she's the man. Isn't that? Isn't that? Isn't it? And she's the man. Simmer oh, down now. She Simmer down now. Let's see. Blast asks, "How long do you hope to play this sport you love so much?" I said, or like I said earlier, as long as I can. I don't have a timeline. Uh, I don't have an end date. I would like to play as long as uh, I get to play. Okay, this is the last blast question and then I'll answer two more after that from this feed. Um, I play on a church slow pitch team and my question for you is how can I keep myself from getting jammed when I'm trying to drive a ball to the fence? It happens to me a lot. So anytime you're getting jammed, um, it can be two things. Um, it can be your timing, which is usually the case. And then, and then on the flip side of that, it could be if your barrel's kind of lagging a little bit and you're not getting your barrel out. So uh, I would say check your timing. Make sure you're not waiting too long. Obviously, if you wait too long, you're going to get jammed. If you're trying to drive the ball to the fence, I would, um, especially in slow pitch, I would say really try to get your barrel um, extended as far out as you can and meet that ball out there because that, that ball is going like this. I mean, I'm not a slow pitch master, so if anybody is, correct me if I'm wrong, but if that ball's coming in like this, you want to catch it before it, gets, before it gets too deep, especially if you're trying to drive it to the fence. So check your barrel, check your timing. Okay, Blast, thank you for facilitating those questions. And that, that last one was from Facebook, um, from Isaac McGee. I will um, answer two more questions. I got a good one from Brett Brown. Who inspired you the most? Um, definitely my mom. My mom inspires me the most because she's just a fearless, badass, really cool chick. And she gets a lot done and she's... Um, you know, she's a boss and she's, she's a part owner of her company, which is so cool because she works so hard for that. And she, um, she does so much and she has so much on her plate, but she's the first to do something for you if you need it. So she would never, I would never call her and she'd be like, you know, I can't do that right now. I'm, I'm busy. She would kind of drop everything and, and f help me figure something out, which, um, I love her for. And I think that's so cool. And she doesn't have to do that, but she does. And, um, I can really call her up anytime and I know she'll answer and, and kind of tell me to get my uh, get my stuff together, if you will. And not a lot of people can tell me that, and, and I would take it, like I usually would get a little attitude with them, but she, uh, she inspires me because she keeps it all together and she does it all, she really does it all, and, and it can be done. So I look up to her and she inspires me to keep going. Um, shout out to H-Town, I just got a little, little notification. Um, let's go back up to the top. I know a couple were asked at the top before I started. This will be the last question. Uh -huh. Do you remember? Okay, so William Teeter asked if I remember the home run grand slam that you hit in North Texas against Mean Green when you broke the record. I do remember that home run. It was a grand slam, and I did break the NCAA record with that one, and that was uh, one of my more memorable ones, but honestly, it, um, it was more of like a, whew, like that's done, uh, kind of the weight came off my shoulders and I was able to finally play ball. So I think at that moment, it was like the pressure was done. So it was a very significant and, and heavy moment for me for what I had kind of fought through and what I did, um, you know, to get there leading up to that. So doing it and accomplishing that, um, of course I remember it. I remember how relieved I was. So thank you for asking that question. Okay, guys. That is it. I am done uh, answering the questions. I appreciate everything that you guys asked and, and your participation. We had a lot of good viewers on here and um, your comments are appreciated and thank you for the good lucks uh, throughout my rehab. That's gonna be huge for me going forward because this is about to probably get a little hard. 
Um, so thank you guys. Uh, do me a favor, check out Blast. Great product. It's the official sensor technology of the MPF, and that's the league that I play in. Um, and you can get better at your swing, and, and I promise that the, the, uh, the tech behind it is there, and it's true, and um, it's good stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't. So give Blast Motion, um, give them a shout, and, and check out their stuff. But thank you guys for tuning in, and I can't wait to do this um, next time.